Hello traders, so I've been getting this question a lot, especially now that we're seeing a lot of central banks actually starting to cut interest rates. Now there's a lot of confusion that is going around, right? Obviously you understand that the, the basic is that the higher interest rate currency is gonna outperform a lower interest rate currency, right? So remember, not everything is written in stone, right? They, you need to also understand the context to what is currently happening in terms of the market environment, the current cycle that we are in, right? In terms of the global economy, right? So in this video, I'm just gonna answer that uh, because it's a question that I've been getting a lot uh, in terms of people having difficulties with uh, with uh, understanding interest rates and, and the differences and how you can use that to advantage. And also some of the simple questions like Euro USD is currently going up. Why is Euro USD going up? Because the dollar has interest rates of 5.5%, uh, whereas the euro has interest rates of 4.25 percent why is that why why is, is euro usd going up instead of going lower because i sold but my stop loss got triggered right so in this video i'm gonna answer why divergence drives direction right so that is the key thing that i'm going to answer in today's session so very importantly we need to understand the context that is first and foremost then secondly we need to understand that the eco an economy is not driven by interest rates only right interest rates are just one component of the economy we also have gdp we also have uh, we also have unemployment a lot of other economic drivers that actually contribute to forming the whole bigger picture of the economy but for for today we're just going to focus predominantly on interest rates so a key th key thing that you need to understand based on the cycle that we are currently in first and foremost what is currently happening with inflation of the different uh of the different economies obviously i'm gonna use euro usd as an example because that is one of the questions that was asked or in making reference to euro usd right so we're gonna start with uh obviously we're not gonna look at interest rates because we know where interest rates stand but let's just look at inflation right i want us to quickly look at inflation first so so as you can see with inflation let us look at euro inflation euro inflation has been going down since january from 2.8 then it's it's sort of uh, i'd say bottomed at 2.4 around april and then it has been fluctuating up up and down up and down since let's say may right and that is with the headline inflation core inflation obviously core inflation also was falling up until april and then it started sort of increasing in may and then it sort of stabilized or, or flattened out at 2.9 right so that is what that is the story that we having with inflation and remember what i always say inflation drives interest rate expectations that is the picture that we can see in 2024 based on euro inflation now let us look at us inflation us inflation moved from 3.1 all the way up to 3.5 in march 2024 then it has been falling since april 2024 up until current the most recent or the most latest that we got which is july 2024 so you can clearly see headline inflation as well as core inflation is falling yes inflation in the united states is still way above the euro inflation but if you're looking at the trend if you if you were look if you were a central bank or a central bank and you had your inflation or the inflation of your economy falling like we're seeing with the us dollar for four months where it has been dropping compared to the euro where for four months it has been fluctuating up and down up and down and core inflation has just went up and then it sort of stabilized at 2.9 for the past three months which would you have confidence as central as, as a central banker of the euro to cut interest rates or would you have confidence as, as a central banker of the dollar to actually do what to actually cut interest rates the reason i ask that is because we can clearly see that for the dollar inflation is clearly going lower for the for the euro yes it has been dropping yes it's slower than the dollar inflation or the u.s inflation but it's not clear in terms of is it smoothly or sustainably dropping over time right so that is the first thing that we need to take into consideration then the second thing that we are going to also look at is the actual preferred measure of inflation for the federal reserve or the u.s uh or, or the u.s central bank and that is the PCE, right? The core PCE measure. As you can see, the core PCE measure currently sits at 2.6, right? So that is relatively close to what? To the 2% target. And it has been dropping and it's sort of stabilized in the first, first half of 2024 at 2.8. And now it has dropped to 2.6, right? So 
you can clearly see that with the dollar inflation is definitely on the on on or on a downward trajectory right we can clearly see that with this core pce measure and why do we spec why do why do i also make reference to the core pce measure because if you scroll down here you can clearly see that what it says the core pce is the fed's preferred inflation measure right and then obviously the central bank has a two percent target and we can clearly see what is happening here if you also read this sort of summary right up right on top here it says the same as oh, sorry it, um okay i want us to read the monthly okay so here it goes on the monthly basis core pce prices rose by 0.2 percent in june accelerating from 0.1 in march uh sorry in may uh, and above market estimates of 0.1 right so here's a very important thing to understand with the month over month uh, uh reading of inflation as long as it is at 0.2 or below 0.2 that is considered to be good because if we consistently get a print of 0.2 or less over time the headline or the year over year inflation will eventually converge towards the two percent target so as long as the month over month is at 0.2 or less that is good that means that inflation is headed in the right direction towards reaching the target so that is the first thing that you need to look at right where is inflation relative to to the to the central bank target and most importantly how has inflation been tra trending for the past three months past six months past 12 months right that is the first thing that we did now the second thing in an in a, in an in an uh, environment where currently central bankers are actually cutting interest rates right or some are actually approaching that point of actually starting to cut interest rates now we also need to look at the expectations because remember above all else markets move based on future expectations right so in this case we need to look at interest rate expectations for the different economies so now i'm gonna go to uh forex live here because they generally publish this every single week uh yes we do have it on our spreadsheet but i'm just going to go to an open resource uh that you also have access to right okay so now we are going to look at the interest rates now because remember markets remember inflation drives interest rates expectations but markets move based on interest rate expectations or future expectations right whenever markets are moving it's because they're pricing in something in the future so now let us see if whether we can now get a clearer picture on the interest rate expectation side because we've already looked at inflation and it's clear it's the picture is more clearer for the us dollar compared to the euro right so now let us look at uh, expectations right uh, of interest rates so as you can clearly see here they generally publish this every single week so you can check them out uh, it's forex live so as you can see for the federal reserve 95 percent or sorry 95 basis points which is 0 0.95 percent of interest rate cuts expected by the end of 2024 the fed only has three more meetings left right and, or, and and they are pricing in 95%, sorry, 95 basis points, which is 0.95%, right? In terms of uh, interest rate cuts that are expected from the Federal Reserve. Then there is a 71% probability of a 25 basis point, which is 0.25% rate cut at the upcoming meeting. Let us look at the ECB. ECB, 66 basis points, right? Which is 0.66. So even if you factor in the fact that the, the 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 ECB they've already delivered one interest rate cut in June of 0.25 percent. If you had if you if you add 25 to 66, it only gives you what? It only gives you uh 80 uh around 91, right? Around 90, yeah, 91 91 basis points. So it's so it's it's about it's like five basis points higher than what the Fed than what the market is pricing in for the Federal Reserve. There's a 94% probability of a rate cut at the upcoming meeting for the euro, which is the September meeting, right? So you can clearly see that even in terms of market pricing for interest rate cuts, there's an aggressive pricing of interest rate cuts for the Federal Reserve compared to the ECP. So that as well creates that divergence in terms of interest rate, interest rate uh, expectations, sp specifically here, interest rate cut expectations right so that is why we are seeing the dollar weaken compared or weaken aggressively compared to the euro and the euro is going up even though the dollar currently has higher interest rates than the euro but we are seeing what the dollar fall and the euro actually sort of remain uh not really strengthened but yeah it, it will obviously strengthen if the dollar weakens but the reason why it's because 
inflation the inflation story or picture is more clearer for the for the US compared to the euro and obviously that is resulting in the euro or the ECB members actually not being as dovish in terms of their communication right because there's no clear picture if whether inflation is falling or it has stabilized the co-inflation co has stabilized at 2.9 since it has been doing for the past three months right so those are things that you need to factor in when you are analyzing data especially when it comes to fundamentals do not take uh, one data point as it is remember that an economy is is built up by a variety of indicators or a variety of factors or economic indicators right so those are the two things that you need to focus on to understand that divergence drive drives direction so look at inflation look at the picture there how is the trend how has the trend been going when it comes to inflation then secondly look at the interest rate cut uh, or, or sorry the interest rate expectations at this point because all central banks are expected to cut so you understand that when central banks cut interest rates you look to sell yes that's very true but remember once again not everything is written in stone what is the context that they are cutting on because you can have a, 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 a the same way you can have a dovish hike in interest rates you can also have a hawkish a hawkish cut in interest rates that will be based on the context that the central bank is actually cutting interest rates from right so that is what i wanted to share and i hope it answers the questions that i've been getting about uh, there's no clarity because all central banks are cutting interest rates which one should i go for why is euro strengthening against the dollar and euro usd is going up and i sold because i i saw that euro the dollar has higher interest rates than the euro this is the reason why right because you need to understand more or get more of an in-depth understanding right and also if you want to know more and actually clarify your picture when it comes to the understanding of fundamentals so that you can understand why fundamentals fuel forex understand why or how divergences drives uh how divergences drive uh, direction also understand how um the, the 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 commitment of traders report actually uh catalyzes confidence so it gives you the confidence to actually hold positions see trade setups and then you also get to understand uh, when it comes to the fact that swing trading or swing positions pull profits, how to actually maximize your profits in trading, right? So if you want to know that and get to a, a point where you have clarity in your trading and in your, and in your trading process, you can join my, my 12 day fundamental analysis mastery challenge that starts on Monday, uh, August 26th. Uh, so if you want to know more about that, click the first link down in the description that will take you to the telegram group that's a free telegram group where you also get uh, updates on fundamental analysis click on that link there and you'll get to know more about the challenge right but if you really want to transform your trading and really want to take your trading to the next level effortlessly just by understanding fundamentals and get clear on the interpretation of the fundamental data then you do not want to miss the challenge that we are starting on monday august the 26th right so I hope you found value from this video and as always if you like if you found value like the video if you have not yet subscribed do subscribe and i'll see you guys in the challenge starting on monday august the 26th cheers